Okay, this is the spirometer that we are going to use to take our lung volumes. And this is the lung volume graph, just so we can um, refer to it as we're taking our measurements. And if you look at the spirometer, what you're going to see is an input valve. This is, you breathe into this. Um, this type of spirometer is sort of old school. It only will measure exhaled air. So you can't suck in, you can only breathe out. Um, and if you set it to this red dial here, that will um, set it to zero. And then when you breathe out, it will measure the volume in milliliters starting um, at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, um, which you can also convert to liters, one liter, two liters, three liters, four liters. So it kind of looks like a, the face of a watch. And this, um, this hand will move around um, depending on the volume of air that you push through the spirometer. So I've set it to um, the dial, so you can turn this to, to set it to zero or wherever. Um, let me go back and focus. I've set it to 1,000, see how I'm moving it, um, to start because we're gonna do tidal volume, and tidal volume is a small number, and there's no dash marks here. And this, to be honest, this spirometry is spir spirometer is probably not sensitive enough to get an accurate tidal volume, but we're gonna do it anyway and see what we get. Remember that tidal volume is, this resting tidal volume right here is going to be um, the amount of air that you breathe in and out in your lungs in a quiet breath. And on average, it should be around 500 milliliters for both men and women. So let's see what I get for tidal volume. Okay, that was probably too much. I probably breathed in a little bit too much. So let me try it again, try to do a quiet breath. So you can see that sometimes experiments don't work exactly as you planned. <laughs> okay, quiet breath. Okay, better. So this is going to be 100, 200, 300, 400 milliliters. So we are going to say that my um, tidal volume is 400, so 400 milliliters. So the next um, volume that we can measure using our spirometer, we're, we're only allowed to do exhaling, so we have to keep that in mind, um, is we can look at the inspiratory, or sorry, expiratory reserve volume or ERV. And I can do that by taking in um, a regular breath, breathing out a regular breath, getting to the bottom of my tidal volume, and then exhaling forcefully um, to get the ERV. Okay, so I'm going to reset this. I'm going to set it to zero now. Okay, right on the zero. And I'm going to take a normal breath and then I'm going to exhale forcefully. So here we go. Let's see what we get. Okay, so that looks to be about 1,200 milliliters. So let's mark that down. Expiratory reserve volume for me was 1200. And if we look over here, we can see that in, oh, I'm actually a little better than average. So um, females, typically expiratory reserve volume is around 700. Um, it's possible that I, that I didn't do a full um, exhale, normal exhale. So that's just something that you have to take into account when you're doing these experiments. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to measure using expiration only is the vital capacity. So here's vital capacity. It's this measurement from the top amount that you can breathe in. So you take a complete breath and then you exhale completely. Remember that the remaining volume down here is the residual volume. And I forgot to say this, but we're just going to assume for me that my residual volume is 1.5 liters. That's not something that we can measure directly. Okay, so let's take the vital capacity. I'm gonna reset the, our spirometer to zero. Just 
hard to do with one hand. Okay. okay, we're set to zero again. Now I'm taking a deep breath and then I'm going to exhale completely into this tube. not bad um, so we went from zero to that looks to me like 3,100 milliliters so vital capacity was equal to 3,100 milliliters for me okay um, there's a few things that we can calculate um, based on these volumes that we've taken um, a very important one would be our total lung capacity, so the total amount that we can hold. And um, total lung capacity is going to be easily calculated by adding the vital capacity, which is your IRV, your ERV, and your um, resting tidal volume to your residual volume, which we estimated. So vital capacity plus residual volume, this is in liters, but if you want it in milliliters, it's 1,500. Um, for me is going to be, let's see, 3,100 plus 1 1.5 is going to be 4,600 milliliters. Let's see how that compares to average. Total lung capacity for females, 4,200. Hey, I'm doing pretty good. And, um, okay, so total, total lung capacity. Um, let's see, the other thing that we can calculate is inspiratory reserve volume. This spirometer unfortunately does not allow us to measure this directly, but if we take our vital capacity again, remember vital capacity is just IRV plus tidal volume plus ERV. So we have the ERV and the tidal volume, so we can calculate the inspiratory reserve volume by taking our vital capacity and subtracting these two numbers. So that would be, let me go over here and do the math. I should have brought my calculator. Okay, so that was our vital capacity, minus 1,600. I believe that's 1,500. I'll just do it in my head really quickly. Yes. So this is our IRV. And if I compare that to the average IRV for um, females, 1,900. Okay, so a little bit low, but still good. All right, so that is how you use your spirometer to assess various, um, various volumes and capacities. Um, and I expect you guys to be able to describe that process on the exam.